Well, today I'm going to talk about a topic that I personally find fascinating, and that's physics. Not just any physics, one of the most important theories published ever on that subject, and that, of course, is Einstein's special theory of relativity. Now, Albert Einstein's a pretty smart dude, right? I'm sure many of you have heard his name. In fact, he's so brilliant, he was so brilliant that his name has become synonymous with being too smart for your own good, of course. I think, personally, Renshaw would be a much better you know, substitute for this. Um, but what did he... But what did he do to be perceived as so brilliant? Well, what he did was he unified 50 years of work in the scientific community. And he published all of that on this subject, time. Now, this is a clock. I'm sure many of you are familiar with these. You know, this one is actually meant to be hanging on my kitchen wall. Sorry, Mom. Um, and this really governs our lives. It tells us when to wake up. It tells us when to go to school. It tells us when to go to lunch. It tells us when to go home. And, okay, sorry. And it even tells us, like, when to go to sleep and stuff like that. But what if this unit of measurement that we have built the foundation of society on isn't really as consistent as it should be? What if, I'm going to put this away real fast. What if instead of being held constant, time could stretch? What if instead of being absolute, time was relative? That is exactly what Albert Einstein tried to fix um, using his theory and two rules, just two rules. I mean, the Oak Ridge Honor Code has three, right? He did it in just two, right? So first rule, the speed of light in a vacuum is the same for all observers regardless of their speed. So basically, I'm going to walk away from the micro fast. Basically, what I'm saying is if I shine this laser at that wall, right, every photon leaving this laser is traveling at exactly the speed of light. It's going to travel that fast if I walk across the stage like this, if I walk backwards, if I spin around in a circle like that. It's always traveling the exact same speed. And that seems kind of simple right now, but it does cause some serious problems later on. And second of all, all laws of physics apply normally within a frame of reference moving at a constant speed. What, what this is basically saying is if you are, say, in an airplane and all the windows are closed and you take a ball and throw it in the air, it's going to fall right back down. It's not going to fly to the back of the plane because the plane's moving forward so fast, no. What this is saying is within any kind of frame of reference where you don't have access to the outside world and outside measurements, you cannot experimentally determine how fast you're going. Interesting. So to illustrate just the basics of relativity, we're going to use the highway analogy. Imagine you are standing on the side of, I don't know, Pioneer Parkway or something, right? You're watching cars go by. Yep. Um, and they're moving pretty fast, right? They're going straight along the road. And, but what changes if we are now one of the cars? Now the cars are stationary, while a person, that idiot standing on the side of the highway watching cars, moves very quickly in the opposite direction. So who's right? Well, they're both right. I'm sure many of you have experience driving cars, and I'm sure many of you have noticed this. If you're moving on the highway with traffic, it feels like you're not really moving at all because none of the cars around you are moving relative to how fast you're moving. So to explain why this doesn't work with light, I'm going to use a very simple analogy. It's the spaceship analogy. Uh, we have our impeccable Starship Enterprise right there who's going to demonstrate for us, and it is going to shine a light off of a mirror. Now that laser is going to fly from the ship to the mirror and be bounced right back at the ship, right? Simple. So its path looks like this, right? Yes. Now we are at the standpoint of an outside observer, and we are watching the spaceship fly by as it shines this light. So we, we repeat the experiment while it's moving, and now, yeah, the animations are a bit off, I'm sorry. Now it makes a V shape. Okay, that makes sense, right? It's the same thing as with the highway. But the problem is, if we remember the first rule, the very first rule, the speed of light is the same for all observers. So for both observers, the light was sent and received at the same time, and the speed of light was the same, right? Then how on God's green earth, or in the universe anywhere really, could this distance and this distance be different? Shouldn't the distances have to be the same? This is the problem. This simple conundrum is what held the entire physics community hostage for 50 years. Until Einstein solves it, of course. And the answer is time dilation. 
So you know, the speed of light is, is the same, the time it takes is the same, and the distance is different. So how can this really happen? It's because time is not constant. This unit that we have based our entire lives on actually is completely malleable. It changes, but it changes predictably. And, how, and that is how this model can work. It's because on the faster moving ship, when you're inside of this, on the faster moving ship, time actually moves slower. So the time it takes for this light to go up and down takes longer versus the outside one where the distance is longer, but it takes less time because the time dilation isn't present. And that brings us to a few points. It gives us a few simple rules to work with, right? Basically, time moves slower the faster an object moves. Okay? But that means at exactly the speed of light, your time would be standing completely still. And that's why light is the universal speed limit. If you were to go exactly the speed of light, you wouldn't age at all. Your time would be frozen. And more importantly, if you could travel faster than the speed of light, you would actually reverse your internal time. Interesting stuff. I mean, it's interesting, but does this even make any sense? And the answer is no, it doesn't make any sense. From looking around at our world, we can't tell that light and time and even distance and mass and everything that we can measure makes this much of a difference. In fact, even when it was published, the, fifth, the entire scientific community didn't really believe him that much. And there was one simple reason behind this, of course. It couldn't be tested. You know, with Newton's laws, take the law of gravitation, you can throw an apple in the air, falls back down, okay, gravity works, cool. But with relativity, how can you make something go fast enough to measure the difference in internal time? And that's a very, very hard thing to do. I mean, you have to be going very, very fast. And it wasn't tested until, of course, the GPS network. Now, GPS, it's pretty cool. You have it on your phones, you have it in your cars. If you've ever gone hiking, you may have had you know, a GPS unit with you. It tells you where you are anywhere on Earth. It's some very cool stuff. But the technology behind this is even more complex than you might realize. There are 24 satellites in orbit, and they are precisely placed so that any receiver on the ground can pinpoint its position using any three or four satellites. However, they're moving really fast. In orbit, that's 14,000 kilometers per hour. That is 140 times the speed limit on I-30. That's pretty fast, right? And this is definitely fast enough to feel the, the supposed effects of relativity, but of course, true to form, the engineers designing the system did not listen to take, you know, they did not listen to Einstein. And this caused a problem, because when they launched the satellites, they discovered that the internal clocks on the satellites that make GPS possible, each clock was drifting by 38 microseconds every single day. Now, a microsecond. That's one hundred thousandth of a second. That's not a lot. I can't even blink that fast. That's no time at all. So 38 of those, that shouldn't cause a problem, right? Wrong. That is 10 kilometers per day. Every single day on Earth that these clocks are wrong, you could see your position on Earth drift by 10 kilometers. That means by the end of five days, you could be standing in this room with a GPS unit, and it could be like, yeah, you're totally in Denton right now. 100%. That's a, that's a lot of drift. That's a lot of drift. Within a few months, this would be completely out of hand. Um, so, they, of course, they fixed it. They set up systems to reset the clocks every you know, so often to make sure they were on time. But more importantly, his theory worked. <laughs> Great. Of course, Einstein wasn't around to see it work. He was long dead by then. Didn't even get a Nobel Prize for it, unfortunately. But we have to ask ourselves a question here. For all of us, of course, I'm doing this presentation because I like this kind of stuff, but for a lot of you, I cannot imagine this being very interesting. So the real question here is, why does this matter? And a blanket answer is, it really doesn't. Unless you're a technician for a satellite network, or if you're working with a particle accelerator, you're probably not going to use any relativistic equation. But there is something to take out of this, something we can learn from how Einstein found the answer. For 50 years, the entire scientific community was stuck on this one simple problem because of their unquestioning belief in the absolutism of time 
And all it took, all it took to solve the problem was one young man coming along and saying, hey, what if we were wrong for the past, I don't know, 2,000 years? That's all it took. 50 years of work solved in a few years by one young man. So I implore you, please, learn something from this. Question your own beliefs. Prove yourself wrong once in a while. It's fun. Prove the world wrong. That's what he did, and it turned out pretty great for him. Now his name is synonymous with being smart. I mean, hey, Greer, nice job. I mean, I would love it if people use my name for that. <laughs> that's, that's a pretty cool thing. But challenge your own beliefs. Challenge yourself every once in a while. And more importantly, challenge what people think is, is correct. This, believe me, this entire slideshow is just the snowflake on the tip of the iceberg that is relativistic physics. And there are thousands of other fields out there just like it that could easily be gridlocked by unquestioning belief in the incorrect. So go save them. Save them from themselves. Be Albert Einstein. Ask a few questions here and there. Who knows, maybe you will change how we look at the world around us. I'm going to leave you with a quote from the man himself. The true sign of intelligence is not knowledge, but imagination. Fifty years of knowledge got us absolutely nowhere. But a few years of imagination revolutionized the world. Imagine that. Thank you.